NIO, XPeng, and Li Auto. These are three Chinese electric vehicle stocks that have been going up like crazy. Let's look at XPeng in more detail and try to figure out if the stock is a buy or a sell. Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and if you wanna catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing XPeng stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. XPeng is a Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer. The company is headquartered in Guangzhou, but it has an office in California. The company was founded in 2015. The G3 model is a top three best-selling electric vehicles in China. The P7 model can travel 706 kilometers or 439 miles on a single charge, which is the longest distance for a Chinese electric vehicle. The cost of the cars ranges from 30 to 40,000 US dollars. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 25 billion market cap. They're trading at 34.85 a share and they have 705 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow, that's how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So as expected, they have negative free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. They also have negative net income every year. Revenue in 2018 of 1 million US dollars. It went to 348 million in 2019 and revenue in the trailing 12 months is 314 million dollars and it's low because of coronavirus. I converted all their financials on this Excel file to US dollars. This is the company's income statement and these numbers are in yuan. Their first year was in 2018 9.7 million. Then in 2019 sales went up to 2.3 billion. Since they haven't sold too many cars yet, their cost of revenue is higher than their revenue. But as sales increase, they'll become more efficient and economies of scale set in. They had a negative gross profit and they have a lot of operating expenses because they're still trying to grow their business. If you wanted to look at any of these numbers in US dollars, just divide by seven. And they had a positive $56 million of operating interest income. This is the interest they receive on their investments minus the interest they pay in their debt. And their other income was $32 million, but you see in a trailing 12 months is $691 million. Let me show you what that is. This is a non-cash item, so it's added back on the statement of cash flows. Companies purchase different types of derivative contracts to hedge against their risk. So I didn't really look too deeply into what the derivatives are. For example, if this company bought engines from Europe, so something XPeng may do is buy derivative contracts on the exchange rate risk. If the euro to yuan exchange rate changes a lot out of favor for this company, they would hedge against that risk so they don't have to spend more money on products. So they have a pretty big negative net income each year. This is the statement of cash flows and to calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus CapEx. So in 2019, they had negative 3.5 billion of operating cash flow and they invested $2 billion into CapEx. CapEx is investments in property, plant, and equipment. So their free cash flow was negative 5.6 billion. CapEx are large upfront expenses, but it's gonna benefit the company in the future as it grows and produces more vehicles. Let's look at a capital structure. $325 million of debt, negative 1 billion of equity. When a company has negative equity, that means its liabilities are greater than its assets. They pay 1.5% interest on their debt, and they're 100% debt since they have negative equity. And the weighted average cost of capital is the cost of debt, 1.48%. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for us, 13.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $12.2 billion. We divide that by 705 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 1731. They're trading at $35, so they're trading at a 101% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a little lower than me. They're at 1165 a share, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued. So obviously it's really difficult to value a company with negative free cash flow. So I had to use analyst estimates, plus I had to look at similar companies' financials like Tesla and Neo to figure out the valuation. You can see the stock has only been trading for a few months and it was flat for a while. The stock price has almost doubled in the past week. 
If you invested $10,000 when this company IPO'd, you'd have $16,000 today. That's a 64% return, which is an annualized return of 329%. This is a picture of the G3 model. It cost about $30,000 to $40,000. When you compare it against four other autonomous cars, it seems like the G3 has many more features. All five cars have autonomous cruise control. Three of the five cars have lane centering control. Only two of the cars have autonomous parking. And three of the five cars have traffic sign recognition. Axpang is the only car that has all four features. The top of this chart shows the price of the cars in Yuan. To get the value in US dollars, you can divide these numbers by seven. This chart shows the number of sales by quarter for both of their models, the G3 and the P7. This is a picture of the P7. It also costs 30 to 40,000 US dollars. China has the largest EV market in the world. It sold almost 1 million vehicles in 2019. China's EV market represents 45% of the world's EV sales. These are the projected sales by year in China for electric vehicles. The Chinese government has a long-term plan of having at least 30% of smart cars on the road by 2025. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 16.6, the median is 15.0. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. We can't look at this ratio. The average price to book is 4.9, the median is 2.0. Price to book is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 78.3, so much worse than the average and median. The average price to book is 4.6, the median is 2.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're negative 24 since they have negative equity. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on a balance sheet. The average interest coverage ratio is 12.5, the median is 3.9. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're negative since they have negative EBIT. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. The average ROE is 12%, the median is 12%. We can't look at this ratio because they have negative net income and negative equity. The average current ratio is 1.8, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. It's a good sign they can cover their current liabilities. Current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. Examples are cash, accounts receivables, and inventory. Current liabilities are debts and payables due within 12 months. Examples are current debt and accounts payable. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Ford, Neo, Tesla, and Xpeng is right here. And if Xpeng has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. They're worse than average in all the price multiples. They have the highest current ratio of all the companies. It is good to see they can cover their current debts and payables, which means they can get through the next 12 months, possibly without taking on more debt. We can't look at the ROE. They're 100% debt, and they have a market cap of $25 billion. It's funny to see that Ford has the smallest market cap, but they're the only company making money. The other three companies have negative PE, so they have negative net income. At least Ford has positive net income, although small. And none of these companies pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 101% premium. Their ratios and financials look pretty bad because they're so young and they're investing so much into their business. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. If you want to do a private Zoom session with me, receive a custom valuation, or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.